Now, fresh out of the box, we're going to the black next. And we'll simply... Now normally there would be a notch cut out of this flag. That means it's like a pennant, like a cavalry flag, or um, like the, a notch that's cut out of the flag of the state of Ohio. There's a little part of it cut away. However, we don't want to cut a hole in our artwork to represent this. And so uh, we simply substituted many years ago a black triangle instead to represent that notch. And so, uh, although I do say to you that G, L, I, and Z are the only letters with black in them, when it comes time to literally make the artwork like we are doing right now, uh, we do have to use black, at least in this project. Uh, the seventh graders have options not to use black when they uh, have the same alphabet, but they get to choose their own colors. So, in this case, we're saving the black uh, so that uh, the sixth graders have more access to it. And you will also need a lot of black colored pencil when you um, do the drawing project at some point in time in the future here. But for now, let's focus on what we're doing here. Now each class period, most students over a 10 day period that a project goes on need to average, usually the coloring begins on about the fourth or fifth day. So with 24 characters that we have to color in, uh, it's important that you get about five every work session done every class period. You might be able to get away with four, but you will be pushing your production pace, and sometimes that's not a good thing. Okay, well, here we are. We're moving on to the next letter. Now, many times I will take an index card and I will place it under my hand as I work on my drawings, and that keeps me from smearing the back of my hand when the filth and all of the dirt from, you know, drawing gets on my hand. I rest it on here and that keeps my drawing clean and I would recommend that for you all as well or even just a piece of paper that you could put underneath there uh, keeps your drawings really kind of very sharp looking and also uh, you don't smear the colors together as easily so a lot of this is simply craftsmanship now we're going to the letter L next and in fact we're going to do two L's maybe all three of them at the same time here uh, normally, I would encourage you to work one square at a time in sequence. However, you know, there comes some periods of time when you have the same colors right next to each other, or you want all three of the letters to match, so you do them at the same time uh, when you're in the exact same mood. Uh, I know it's hard to believe, but when you color, sometimes the mood you're in may change from day to day, and that comes through in the artwork you make. So, we want design work to uh, be uh, and look like it was done the way it is on purpose. We call that emphasis. You may remember that from our notes earlier there. Now, uh, let's see. I need the yellow now. And so if we look at our chart, it shows me on the letter L that the yellow is in the upper left and lower right quadrant. Using the yellow first because it's a uh, if we smear it, it won't be so obvious. Now, we do have to work very carefully in this particular area. we got to be very careful not to get that yellow up against the black. So it's sometimes we might just have to leave a tiny little micro space in there. And eventually, uh, we will outline all this in black if we should get that far. So no need to sweat that micro space in the middle there. I'm going to test my luck and get up close to it and I succeeded I think at least with my vision so uh, this could take quite some time here so we're going to just continue to work along and I'm working at a pretty quick pace uh, most students uh, on their first day will not be able to finish this much of the coloring uh, however as the days go by your hands will get stronger your ability to color firmly and only have to make one, you know, stroke mark to get the opacity you want will improve. Uh, if you color it lightly, you're simply going to have to go back over it many times, and that's the requirement, is that it is opaque uh, for the uh, grading portion of this. So uh, it must be complete, it must be on time, and it must be colored opaquely. So the idea of coloring it lightly is something that art students, especially in middle school, need to get over. Uh, how you do coloring books at home, well, that's another story. We're in the business here of making actual artwork after we have received instruction on how to do it. 
and in a rare circumstance I am now making it right here with you. So as we work along you can color either as fast as I am if you can keep up or you may have to stop this video and color for a while and then try to you know restart the video again. It's important that if you don't understand something that you simply just go back and review the video again. You can play it slower if you so desire. Some people work more quickly than others, so that's just nature. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and continue coloring, uh, well, one square at a time in this case, one letter at a time, but I will move on to the next letter before I start the black again. And that will allow me to be efficient with the time that I've got in class. And each day in class, we only have, oh man, uh, very little time. Uh, so about 40 minutes uh, of actual production time, uh, regardless of what the schedule is. Sometimes we have six periods, other times we have eight periods. But there's never more than about 40 solid minutes of production time and instruction time. And so we really, really need to take advantage of that and I am working fast, but I am attempting to work at the same level of quality that I would expect from my students. And uh, it can be tough on you to stay focused on your work. Art sometimes is not a real, real structured class, and as a result of that, uh, students tend to want to talk to each other, and that distracts not just you from doing your work, but your classmate as well. So. Um, it's one thing if you're not getting your own work done, that's not good. But if you're also disrupting the work of somebody else who's especially attempting to do the work, then that's really not right. And so, in this particular situation, you may be working by yourself at home, or perhaps you're sitting with another classmate and you're doing art together in this case. Uh, that would be a really neat use of your time. Now, I have to sharpen my pencil because I've used up quite a bit of pencil so far so I'm going to give it about three good twist in the sharpener you can't get too greedy or you end up just snapping the tip of the pencil off uh, that's beautiful alright we're going to continue on since the next letter is also an L we're going to duplicate what we see here and be efficient with our class time even though it's an E lesson and even though you seem like you may have a long time to do it I'm going to bet it goes faster than you think so um, at some point in time, in the not distant future, this project needs to be completed. Uh, we usually allow about 10 days for that. And not only that, it needs to be uh, graded. And we will come up with a system for grading artwork this way, uh, if you are an E student. Now, if you're not an E student, you will simply have this uh, available during class time. And then we will uh, literally grade it in class. And uh, there's a system for doing that also. Now you might notice when I get up to the edge of the paper a lot of times you gotta abandon that idea of going back and forth or you'll catch the edge of the paper and the, the best thing that will happen is you'll just curl it up. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is you might actually rip it and then you gotta tape it and then it makes marks that nobody likes because when you color over the tape. So. Um, I've seen that many times before. So when you get up close to the edge, sometimes you have to just change the strike of your uh, mark so that it goes along the edge of the paper and kind of gives you a little bit of wiggle room there when it comes time to get up close to the edge. Wow, that is looking fantastic. Um, I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, and you should be too. If you're working along with me at this pace, you're doing a great job. So uh, let's uh, continue on one more time here with this. You may have to re-sharpen again, but we're making fantastic progress. And we're not up against the edge of the paper now, see, so we can color a little more aggressively. Now, some of you might already be getting writer's cramp. Well, that's how it is when you make color pencil drawings. Sometimes you have to bear down hard on the pencil. In this case, that is the requirement. Uh, if you have a kind of a shorter working tip with the uh, colored pencil, you might notice that it, you spend less time uh, sharpening it. It's it's a lot easier to do this with a stout working tip that's got a good point on it and then like I was saying you just gotta constantly be rolling the colored pencil in your fingertips. Uh, you might have noticed me doing that 
uh, sometimes it just becomes so natural that you don't think about it because you're just always trying to get that sharp corner so you get control. And the same thing goes for drawing or writing. If you're constantly rolling that pencil in your fingertips, then you'll always have a pretty sharp point on it and you'll get as much mileage as you can possibly get out of one sharpening. Uh, when you start noticing that the, the actual wood is dragging on the picture, you got to stop because, you know, you're going you're gonna to mess things up when you do that. So you're going to scratch your paper, and then it's very difficult to uh, make it look good that way, too. i got a speck of something right there driving me nuts. I got it out of there. Okay, so uh, we're going to sharpen up one more time, and we're going to do the letter L down here because we got all three of them right with each other. Why not just keep at it? Uh, since it's right there in front of us. Uh, but normally I would say to a student that you should just work your way from uh, the left to the right. And unless you're left-handed, then you might want to work yourself in the other direction so that you don't uh, have a lot of problems. Here we are. Now we're back to this. This is the letter L again that is just underneath the other two we just colored in. That's well, and here we are still color in yellow. And we just keep on, we got to keep on focusing and uh, art, especially graphics, what we're doing right now in design, takes a lot of concentration and to do it well. Uh, now, you know, anybody can make a half-baked idea and create a piece of something that's really not art. Uh, but, you know, to do some planning, to uh, take some craftsmanship, you know, and, and some ownership of your work, and to, you know, do the best you can do. I don't think I've ever been unimpressed by anybody that was doing the very best they could do, that was working at the peak of their abilities. Uh, I've been pretty disappointed and students and myself many times when I knew that I wasn't working at the peak of my abilities and that what I made showed it and uh, some people will look at the artwork that you make and they will say that is a thing of beauty it shows your best efforts and then other times they'll look at it and they'll shake their heads and they might tell you good job but you know it wasn't your best effort and a great deal of making art is coming to grips with the idea that you need to be your own biggest critic. If you're tough on yourself, you don't have to wait for some guy like an art teacher to come down and harsh on you. You'll be tough on yourself, and that kind of behavior extends to a lot of things. Not necessarily just making artwork. Or in this case, coloring, which is all we're doing. Now everything I'm saying to you right now is stuff that I would be saying to you if we were in a physical classroom. And so I would be telling you to color more and talk less. I would be telling you to focus on your work. Uh, I would be saying to you things like there's only so many days left in this uh, project and some of you are not going to get it done. And uh, so uh, it requires a great deal of uh, persistence and a dedication to the craft in order to make something that, you know, you'll want to hang on your wall someday. I got news for you out there. The stuff that your parents will keep with them and hang on the refrigerator and keep with them their whole lives will be projects that you make in art class if you do your best. The things they won't keep with them their whole lives will be the time that you got a, a hundred on that social studies worksheet, right? So, artwork is about being true to yourself, making sure that when you do something, it's a representation of your best abilities. And so, craftsmanship, or craftswomanship, if you're a young lady, is all very important. And uh, the veracity, the truthfulness of what it is that you make, whether it speaks to people, whether it says what you want it to say, whether it comes out looking the way that you intended for it to look. And that's what we call unity. 
when we get that. So we're making pretty good progress here today, I've got to say, and I color frequently. However, today I'm on a roll. So we're still working on the letter L here, and this is going to be tricky because we don't want to smear anything. So we got to work in such a manner so that we don't smear our colors together. And so I'm going to go after this one first since it's right up next to a black uh, shape anyhow. Now I'm not sure you can hear it, but there's some music in the background. I normally like to listen to music when I'm working on my own. I rarely have it in a classroom. There's reasons for this, and it usually is because it creates more of a disturbance than it solves. Um, everybody's got their own taste in music, and some people listen to music that some others of us might not like or appreciate. And uh, if it's going to cause disruptions, well, then it really needs to be uh, minimized in a classroom. However, when you're working on your own, many times it's very... Uh, helpful and relaxing and if uh, what you're working on happens to just go with the lyrics and the music well then that's a, a good experience too it gives you something to think about besides just the tedious task of coloring your very best which can get pretty taxing pretty tedious meaning it's mentally tiring and it's not just mentally tiring it's also tiring uh, when it comes to just your hands and your arms and it gets tough to keep at this and so but that's the difference between someone that's making art and someone who's just doing a project in class right and there's nothing wrong with just finishing a project in class and uh, but it's not necessarily a piece of art if you didn't put something into it extra, you didn't struggle with it a bit, and you didn't, you know, uh, have to make tough decisions on it. That's what a lot of making art is, is overcoming difficulties uh, in a project, and that's what we would call a metaphor for life. And uh, it can be a powerful lesson that sometimes when you are stuck, you just got to be persistent. You just got to keep pushing your way through it. When you're in a tough situation, keep going. <laughs> Don't turn back. Uh, you'll just have to start all over. And here we go. Okay, so that took longer than I anticipated, but I want it to look opaque. And that means I want to be able to see the lack of white paper showing through it and sometimes we have to go back and dress these things up even more uh, as we move on through a project it doesn't always come out just perfect on the very first try through it sometimes you run out of time and boy is that a pain in the neck uh, I've run out of time myself on many of my own projects and I take uh, classes of my own still to improve my skills in making art believe it or not so I've got to sharpen my pencil again and uh, it looks like I'll be moving on to uh, the upper right hand side of this particular letter L and I'm just going to keep moving my way through it trying to keep my hands off of the um, artwork if I can uh, and so I can continue to color it all in now I'm finishing it looked well not quite finishing because really the white has to be colored white before this is all done but progress is being made really quickly on this uh, at least in my opinion and uh, if I can get just four squares done or four letters done that would be equivalent to about one class period for almost all sixth graders that I have ever dealt with uh, you get the periodic sixth grader that can just really put down the work beautifully and fast. But I would rather see you work controlled and at a good pace that allows you to meet the deadline, which would be about 10 days from when we start it. Uh, I would rather have you do that. You almost always come out with better work if you don't try to rush through it. 
and nobody's going to get any sort of awards for being done with it first. Uh, you get your reward when you're done good and uh, that's something to really always think about when you're making artwork. It's not always about the speed of the production. If you were a professional artist, you would have a deadline and you would need to meet that deadline. You may have to work uh, you may have to work days and nights in order to get it done. You may have to uh, sacrifice uh, some of your personal time. And uh, that's not necessarily doing homework so much as it is having to take your work home. And uh, There are people that work in their studios almost day and night uh, to get the work that they want to sell completed before the deadline. Now, we're only making a sixth grade art project here, right? But there will be a deadline on it at some point in time. And uh, if you haven't really been giving it your best effort and making good use of class time, you may not be able to finish it before its due date. And, finish, and missing a project or not being able to get a project done is a lot like doing poorly on a test. So the projects really are where the learning takes place at for most of the students when we are trying to uh, create artwork or learn how artwork is made. Even that in itself is, is something to get hard to get your mind around many times. So it looks like we're closing in on the finish line of shape letter number two and all people are created equal. And it's looking pretty good. Going to dress some of these little skip overs up there. Don't want them to look funny. Now I'm coloring on a wooden board, and I'm seeing some of that texture of that wooden board show up in my coloring. Um, so if you've got a textured surface that you're on top of, you might want to think about using a uh, a smoother surface. Sometimes it may give you a better quality of uh, finish than uh, what you would use on top of a rough wooden table. Now I'm back to sharpening the pencil again. We use a lot of colored pencil in this game. Okay, we're going to move on to this one now. And it's just better to just be really deliberate about what you do than it is to skip and miss around and uh, end up messing the work up. It can be easily ruined very quickly if you are not careful with the way that you do your work. And also, it can be your neighbor next to you. can also spill a drink on it. That's why I really discourage people bringing in uh, water bottles and drinks into the classroom. Or if they were to uh, uh, just actually set something down on top of your artwork, it could leave marks on it uh, that would really be destructive to its beauty. So it's important that you safeguard your work as well. Now, uh, there's many times when we have a physical class, there's a lot of young students in that class, and uh, it can get a little bit, it can get a little bit chaotic sometimes. And so it's important that you know, uh, in a physical classroom, that people have some level of control over themselves, so that they can work and others can work. All the materials that you will ever need, at least as long as I'm your art teacher, will always be just at your desk or will be near your desk in such a manner that you don't have to disrupt the work of others in order to uh, continue on your work. So, such as colored pencils, rulers, erasers, these things are almost always kept right at my desk uh, if you need to use them. Colored pencils are kept in drawers throughout the rooms. Those of you who've been in my class before are aware of this kind of thing. You've got trash cans all over the place so you don't have to take laps around the the classroom in order to find a trash can to get rid of your uh, trash. So uh, it's a setup that is very uh, productive if you are willing to put in the work yourself. Okay, I think I'm actually coloring faster now than I was when I started. So uh, you just get into the groove, what we call a flow state, and it makes things go a little bit faster for you. And uh, I'm hoping I can get all of the letters L done here. And uh, one more letter after that. And we can uh, call it a session because I'll tell you what, that's uh, a lot of coloring in one day here. And 
Your work habits are also graded in art class. That's how much work you get done. Whether you get along with people. You know, are you a positive influence on the others around you? I also grade whether you follow rules in this, like the school rules. Are you tardy to class? Do you use your phone in class? Are you, you know, uh, just snarky and angry with other people? Or are you a productive member of the classroom, you know, and helpful? Uh, do you destroy property? All that kind of stuff. Disorderly conduct, of course, that doesn't go in our, in our building. Uh, that's really frowned upon, and it certainly doesn't go in the classroom where people are drawing and painting. We have to uh, respect them, and we've got to respect the classroom as well. So, you know, art is a place that can be fun, but it's also a class, and it needs to be, uh, you know, treated with some respect, just like any other class would be. All right, let's finish up this letter L. And see, you spend some of your time actually sharpening the pencil, so it's not all about color, and it's about, you know, taking that brief break to shake your hand out a little bit, and get that pencil ready to go with a nice working point, and then keep at your work here. So, um, if you color opaquely on the first try, you probably won't have to do much uh, dressing it up at the end of the project. But sometimes, you know, you just... It just doesn't work for you the same way every day. But right now, I'm feeling pretty good about this one. Um, so later on, we'll be doing other uh, parts of this as well. But for the next few sessions, all we're going to do is sit here and color, uh, just like you should be doing if you were in class, in a physical class. You are in a class. You're simply in a e-learning class right now. And I am doing the same work. I'm modeling for you what I want you to do. And uh, if this, uh, we, when we get back to our physical classroom, well, I'm hoping that all of the um, skills you've built and the work habits you've practiced will carry over uh, into the actual physical classroom. That's my goal for you. And here we go. We're making good progress. So I think I'm getting better at this each time I color another square. And we're all we're already finishing up the whole first word. It says all. Huh. Huh. So um if uh any of you have comments or uh have any suggestions or uh, anything that you think other people should know about, feel free to leave those in the comments of my uh YouTube channel here uh, at the bottom of this video. Um, I'd like to thank people for actually tuning in. I've noticed that numerous of you have seen the uh, the design uh, lecture. I've watched uh, uh, the numbers actually go up right in front of me uh, for the quizzes uh, that we posted. So my goal is to improve the quality of the videos that I'm uh, putting out there for you all to participate with and uh, I'm hoping that uh, we'll uh, have a whole series of instructional videos here before um, at the end of the school year and we'll be able to uh, conduct this class if necessary the same way again in the future. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm hopeful though that we'll be back together again physically. I, I miss not teaching students face to face. That is a difficult experience for a lot of old school teachers such as myself. Alright, we're going to finish up this letter L and that might be about all for one session or maybe we'll get one more one more letter out of it. Let's see what happens. But I'm going as fast as I can go and still make good product. So, once again, we're using this black colored pencil all up. And you will use almost all of the colored pencils we selected for this project the red yellow blue black and white and so periodically you might want to check in with your parents guardians have them take a look at what you're doing because if you're back there just coloring on your own and not making a whole lot of noise they might wonder what you're doing so and uh, I've had parents before on these projects say that they didn't think that their child had made it. They didn't think that it was possible for them to create 
uh, a product that looks like it was made in a factory, not even made in a sixth grade art class. So uh, it doesn't get that way by accident, though. It's through the dedication and the hard work of the student.